have a special treat for you on this month's edition of the Success CD. With me here today is Jermaine Paul, season two winner of the hit TV reality show, The Voice. He was the lovable underdog of the show, but his win was of little surprise to those that know him and his dedication and hardworking nature. We have the great opportunity of sitting down with him here today to hear about his journey to success. Jermaine, it's my pleasure to welcome you to success. Well, I'm so happy to be here. So let's start with your story, Jermaine. You uh, you come from a rather large family, uh, and they encouraged you uh, in your music, I believe. T- just tell us a little bit about the, uh, the the journey of growing up. I come from a very humble beginning. I have nine brothers and sisters. Hmm. And um, yeah, we, we grew up in a housing project in uh, Spring Valley, New York, in the toughest part of town. And um, yeah, I mean, we, we my parents did everything to keep us out of the streets you know we attended church pretty much five days a week we had a base we pretty much had a rehearsal studio in our living room so it was always making music always always singing always so now the voice let's talk a little bit about that i guess at first you didn't find success on the voice you actually had various levels of success throughout the year so talk to us about some of those ups and downs particularly when it came to the voice well, I mean, there, there, there were a lot of ups and downs um, within the show and even before the show. Um, you know, through life, uh, you know, I started a family very young. And, and you know, there was always uh, an audition or, or a showcase for a label or, or a president or a and And, you know, for, for a very long time, I got a lot of I got a lot of maybes. Um, and no one ever told me no to my face. It was just more or less. Yeah, maybe we could do something, you know, and, and it never really panned out. And with the voice, you know, um, my first blind audition, you know, I got two chairs to turn around, CeeLo and, uh, and, and Blake. Um, I was hoping to get more than that. But, you know, I mean, it, it is what it is, you know, and, and I got but I got two and it all worked out. So I feel blessed either way. So you sang back up for Alicia Keys for a long time, and it must have been difficult leaving the comfort of that for the unknown. So give us your best advice for those listening that are sort of holding on to the known and a little bit afraid of, of going into the unknown, what it was like for you and what you would say to encourage them to do the same. You know, leaving the background, it took it took some time. It took eight years, you know. Uh, uh, like I said, I have a family, I have four children and a wife, and and you know the bills and things were very very important uh number one priority so um making that transition it was a timing factor also um uh and and there's really no way i could have planned it what i would say to someone coming out of a a working situation to 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 achieve a gold or entrepreneurial movement i would say you know um you know, you know when you're ready to go. Um, you know better than anyone else uh, the right time. And you know, for a while I heard that voice and I kind of fought it. Um, but when I did decide to make the change, it seemed like the stars were just aligned. You know, I, I definitely um, took care of some personal issues and and spiritually I was in the right place. It was definitely. It was more than just a financial movement. It was all around. It was my whole person that had to be in a, in, a, in the right place. So, you know, if I could say anything to anyone that's planning to do something like a big step, like, a, you know, an entrepreneurial step, I would say, you know, make sure you cross your T's and dot your I's and, and not just on the financial level. So through the whole process, share what was your biggest obstacle over the years as you sought to set yourself apart as a solo artist. I think my biggest obstacle overall was just believing in myself, um, believing that what I bring and what I have is good enough. Um, you know, it's almost like, you know, if I could say it in, in, a, in a parable or a metaphor, I would say it's like being a being in a forest and looking at all the big trees in the forest and here you are as a little seed you know not really knowing your capability because you, what you see around you is, is so big and so vast and yeah you have a tendency to to kind of compare you know and it wasn't until I, I I made sure I was in some good soil and I I got the right sun and I got enough water and I was able to grow and 
and I'm still growing. So, you know, I, I feel like my biggest obstacle overall was just believing in myself. So then while you were on the show, you showed a, a great amount of confidence that seemed to impress everyone. So explain what made you feel and appear so confident? <laughs> you know, I think that's so funny because um, I've, I've heard that before uh, in numerous interviews that I appeared so confident. Um, I was a nervous wreck. <laughs> <laughs> I was so, so nervous and so... Um, so afraid and, and on so many different levels um but i would i would never speak it i think I, I was very aware of my words i never wanted to uh say anything that would give me up <laughs> mm -hmm. but the whole time i was i was nervous i was really nervous and and uh just praying and and just and just just praying and nervous <laughs> mm -hmm. was there anything else besides praying that you did to sort of um regather your nerves and give you the poise back so that you could go out and do what had to be done because what you had to do was be terrifying to anybody um <laughs> so you obviously had to get that chutzpah back so is there anything else you do even if it's a mental mantra or just something you think about or you know what what was it that brought you back to confidence well, uh, you know, I think before any performance, there's a nerve factor. I get the butterflies and and then, you know, the nerves begin to turn to adrenaline. And then and then I, I have to kind of cage the beast, and so to speak. <laughs> but, um, you know, before any performance, I try to run on the treadmill and and meditate when I run and just listen to my to my my songs that I've been working on throughout the years and. And, um, you know, I, I, I definitely, you know, in a competition, in, in this competition, there was a lot, there were a lot of con contestants walking around and singing and, you know, all types of music going around you, going around, you know, going around me. Um, so, um, so while that was going on, I, I, I tried to find my quiet corner, my quiet space. Um, and I, I just tried to, to keep my own center. Um, my own plan of attack and uh, you know keep my own thoughts and, and uh, there were times where I would I would literally you know question you know what song to sing and how to sing it and, and I would I would have conversations with myself basically on 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 how to give the best performance and and you know just really really pinpoint my uh, my, my plan of attack and direction so you know as a performer there's that 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 space where you sort of slot in you know where you just you hit your groove in basketball it's called you get you get a hot you get the hot hand you know you just sort of find that space of <laughs> <Exactly>. momentum <laughs> so through everything has who has been your greatest mentor and and share one thing they told you that that changed your life my greatest mentor would have to be my father he has trained me from from day 1 to sing my mother helped me kind of uh, use my emotions and, and, and sing. But the training part really came from my dad. He, he really uh, instilled so much, so much time and effort into me when it comes to singing and music. He is my biggest mentor. Um, you know, even within the competition, you know, he, he would tell, he calls me Juice. He would say, he would say uh, you know, Juice. Just keep your head, you know, breathe, make sure you, you know, you, you connect with the song and don't work too hard. Don't work too hard. He would always say, just say, don't work too hard and let it come naturally. I feel like that's what got me through this whole competition. Let it come to you, yeah. Yeah. So as we start to, to, to wrap this up, Jermaine, tell us what success means to you. I mean, obviously you're talking here to Success Magazine and we define, try to help people define success in a more holistic way manner and fashion but I'm always interested in the answer to that question what does success mean to you in particular how do you know when when you are successful at your at your craft and in life well you know I um yeah I thought I would understand the answer to that question um you know uh after winning the competition and you know I I feel like you know even now there's still some unanswered questions, but that one there today, I can say 
for me, success means the happiness of my children. Uh, success means the growth of my family, uh, the smile on my wife's face. I'm at a place now of, of peace, and I think that is true success. Finding happiness and, and just keeping it consistently, you know, um, and understanding how to do that. It's almost like seeing the matrix, understanding how it works. I know for me, it's just, it's, it starts within. You know, for others it might be different, but for me it starts within. It starts, you know, it started when I decided to let all the bull crap go. It started when I decided to believe in myself. Um, and it started when I decided to, to put God first and, and my family second and, and music third. That's success for me. Mm, beautiful. So the, the last question for you here, if you were knee to knee with someone who has a big dream, but they're uncertain about what to do or if they even have the courage to do it. Now that you've traveled the road a bit, you can look back and maybe help somebody get through it a little quicker with a little less blood and bruises. What advice or <laughs> encouragement would you give them? What, what would be the thing you would say to them to help them along and to encourage them to go forward? Yeah, I would go back to my, my forest, my forest analogy, <laughs> you know, um, don't pay too much attention to the big trees, you know, you know, when, and, and I'm not saying don't pay attention to them, pay a little attention to them, see how they grow and see what causes one to fall and, and wither and, and, and die. Um, but nurture your, your seed, you know, um, you know, you know, when you, you've been partying too late and too much. You know, you know, like like the, like a seed. Too much sun can dry you out, and you can die. Too much water can drown you out, and you can die. You know, so you know. What, when I, by saying that, I guess I would say, you know, too much partying, you will lose. Um, too much worrying and crying, you will lose. You know, uh, you learn from your mistakes, and let that be the water. Let that build you and grow you. And you know, you have a good time. You enjoy it. Let that be the sun, but don't. Don't spend too much time out there, you know? Get back to work. Get back to growing. <laughs> yeah, beautiful. Now, I hate to be the guy to do this, but I, I was told... Be the guy to do it. ...that okay. you would be up for it. So uh, I'd love it if you would uh, treat us to a little bit of a little bit of music, a cappella style. Send us off oh, wow. Jermaine style if, 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 in fact, you are up for it. You got a little something you <laughs> might be able to do, just a quick little ditty? Yeah, I'll do a little ditty. Um... Uh, I was born by the river Oh, in a little tent, yes And just like that river you